It's really important because that gives you a sense of freedom. Remember we were talking about the BPOs? And she said, oh, I don't want to do BPOs. I get it. I understand. But the thing is, if you had money coming every month to cover your own personal overhead for BPOs, hmm, maybe Harris is onto something. What do you think? Okay? So, listen, guys. The, use mint.com. Write that down. Mint.com. Works great. Uh, mint.com. M-I-N-T. We suggest you guys also use, and no, they're not a sponsor, but if they'd like to sponsor, contact me directly. American Express. Use an American Express card. Julie, did we talk about, we didn't talk about it. We forgot right. to put that in our notes. Why? Because it's, well, okay, truthfully, it, because it's easy. If, if you find somebody that's charged something on your credit card, American Express has the most liberal policies to basically get your money back. That's why. American Express supports the consumer more than anybody, more than any, all the other credit cards. And they have good tracking. And they, they have the best points. Account. And you can put all your business and personal expenses on American Express, run the points through Amazon, get your stuff on Amazon for free. Like brochure boxes and stuff you're right. already spending money on. These are simple basic free. things. It's not fancy stuff here. Now, I will caution you guys that you should never delegate any check writing or any access to your money to anybody ever. Ever, 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 ever. Because you will get ripped off. Never, ever, I don't care how rich you become, allow anyone to write checks for you. Who knows somebody who's been embezzled from? I do. I know plenty of agents and brokerages that have been embezzled from. We know people that it was their spouse, their longtime assistant, their many decade accountant, because they allowed them check writing privileges. So when you are, you have to look at the numbers all the time, you have to review, you can use mint.com and review your American Express statement every month and then never let anyone write checks for you. And I'll tell you this also, and this is hard lessons learned, nobody really gives a, sh a, a shoot, yes, <laughs> about whether or not you guys ever save money on taxes or accumulate any wealth. You have to do it yourselves. Your tax attorney, your tax accountant, it, God bless them all, very nice, well-meaning people, uh, are only there to fill out the paperwork and collect the fee and move on to the next. So you're going to have to become your own best tax advisor. We do talk about Bob Wilmer. Is that okay? But you are going to have to become your own best um, financial advisor, and you're going to have to take on that responsibility. And if you think that you're going to be able to delegate those things to anybody who's really going to give a crap about it long term, you're never going to get very far. And we're going to talk about that a little bit this afternoon. We're going to use some specific techniques, practical and tactical, on how to do it. Don't run the black. Can someone wake him up? Yeah, she in blue shirt. What are you thinking? Think about my, uh, my tax advisor. Oh, good. <laughs> Thank you. So I'm having a conversation with somebody in Orange Theory. And he read our book. We gave it to him, but we, he read it. And he's asking us about basically saving money. And he's asking about accumulating. And he asked me for a stock advice. I'm not a stock advice guy. But then I asked him how he's doing his money now. And these guys, nurse and nurse, that's what they do it for a living. They said that they uh, basically have somebody that they know who's a brother who's a brother to a tenant of theirs who lives on their farm with them, who manages their money, who set up accounts at a day for them. I was like, what? And I said, what are they charging? What is he happy with? What funds are you? Oh, it's some mutual funds and some other things. Do you, so you guys understand compounding interest? If not, you've got to write it down. Write down compounding interest and Google it. So compounding interest, Warren Buffett says, is the seventh wonder of the world, right? So compounding interest... You don't get any if you're paying it all on fees. So you really have to take personal responsibility for that. You have to also understand that the system, and I'm not a Bernie voter here, but you have to understand the system is definitely not designed for any of us to accumulate wealth. Absolutely not. Not designed for any of us to be rich, ever. Everything's set up basically to keep us in a very tight financial confines. And unless you recognize that, take personal responsibility for changing it, you're going to, I'm not saying it's bad, but you're going to stay in your own little golden box forever. So an interesting statistic from the Social Security Administration website. May have changed. Most people are born and die. Okay, here I'll ask this better, a different way. How many of you are living within a 25 mile radius of where you were born? Yeah, that's interesting. Okay, so most people born and die are within a 25 mile radius of where they were, they never leave. And here's an interesting statistic, another one. Research this on your own. It's like 93% of everyone, when they reach retirement age, now you're listening, when they reach retirement age, are either, either dependent on a family member or the government just to make, the, uh, make their ends meet. Okay, how is it that in this time in history, in the richest country in the world, that all of us basically grow old broke? It's because we counted on other people to make us rich. 
Because we kind of advisors. We've been hurt by them before. Oh, Jim and Julie, this is how you set this up. This is your this and the other thing. It's like, oh, when's your fees? Oh, don't you ask me about that. Oh, it's 2% management fee. Oh, okay. And then what's this one? Oh, that's not really a fee. That's an administration uh, expense. It's like, a, you know, whatever. Okay, so add them all up together, it's 4%. Well, what's the portfolio uh, increased by? Um, maybe 5%. So, our, so you're saying we increased by 1% this past year, and that means we lose the compounding benefit of having had that 4% if we invest in, say, for example, write this down, Vanguard Index Funds. We're going to talk about that this afternoon very briefly, but we are going to talk about it. You guys should be taking all of this seriously. You're going to be making, you're going to, if you shift your mindset and you get ahead in the market here, and you guys have the ability to start accumulating money, saving cash, you're going to be able to, I'm telling you, you will have such an incredible opportunity to make so much money, it'll bug your brain. What are the greatest fortunes made? You guys have hopefully heard us say this on the podcast before. Hat man. The greatest fortunes are made during the greatest times of change. Oh, my bike story. Thank you. All right, so we are living, and this is before PZ, which we call pre -Zoe. The pre era. Before we lived here, we were living in uh, two places, Las Vegas and Laguna Beach. And uh, you guys remember Jesse James? Mm -hmm. You know, the motorcycle guy? He's to be married to Sandra Bullock. Right. Yeah. So Jesse has some stuff for sale. And in the we were, recession. In the recession. And he's moving out of uh, Long Beach. And he had this uh, really cool red like bike that was not a motorcycle. It was a, a 19, from the 1933, or I don't remember what it was, but this uh, Elgin, it was an Elgin bike. It was really a boy's cool bike, bike. Really Style cool, a lot of money. And I thought, well, that would be kind of cool to have in the wall. So I thought, so I texted him and told him the price. And so I said, okay. And he said, come up and get it. So we went up and got it. And what, what, aside from the decorative value of the bike, what attracted me to it, that bike was incredibly expensive when it was new. And it was new at the, at, during the Great Depression. So during the Great Depression of 19, you know, it was a long period of time. But this bike was made in like 1932 or 33. And here was this bike that cost somebody an arm and a leg that he bought for his kid during the Great Depression. It's like the fanciest kid's bike has a little turnkey, like a little trunk. A horn and a trunk in the front and back. Cool. So we put everything. It's so, really awesome. So we have it up in our family room, and it reminds me that the greatest fortunes are made in times of change. And just because the world around you is going through all that kind of stress doesn't mean you have to participate in it. The way you participate in it is by being a leader and helping as many people as you can help at the highest level you know how to do it which does mean modifying your skills at some point, upgrading, <coughs> dusting off, all of these things. Every single one of you has that ability. And to not do that, especially after today, and after all of your collective experience, to not do that as your coaches, we think that's malpractice.